Well, the first ever National Tea Party Convention is underway in Nashville. And here at CNN, we've been shining the spotlight on this grassroots political movement, people who want their voices heard in Washington, and one in particular not only embraces Tea Partiers' anger, but he was actually born from it. From the final part of our series, Welcome to the Tea Party, we're talking to Kentucky Dr. Rand Paul. He's the son of former presidential candidate and Texas Congressman Ron Paul. And he threw his hat into the Kentucky Senate race last year. He's campaigning against big government. And he even got the special seal of approval from Sarah Palin, who's a keynote speaker at the convention. Dr. Paul, thanks for being with us. Good to be with you. Now, you remember I interviewed you last August. You were here. Uh, we talked to your dad as well. And this is when you were first announcing your candidacy for the Senate. You were a long shot. Now you fast forward six months and you're a viable candidate. What do you think has changed? Oh, it's just been an amazing and astounding campaign so far. We started out 11 points down and we're actually 19 points up in an independent media poll. I give a lot of credit to the Tea Party. The largest events that I've been to in Kentucky have all been tea parties. In my little town in Bowling Green, 700 people showed up for a tea party. In Louisville, 4,000 people. I mean, the largest events in Kentucky have all been tea parties so far. And what is, the, what is your uh, platform or your message that resonates with people that you say are coming to these tea party events? The number one reason why I run for office is because I'm worried about the debt. And that's what you find to these tea parties. They don't want more taxes, but they're mostly concerned about the fiscal insolvency of our nation and that we are, could be ruining or bankrupting the nation, that we're passing on a great debt to our children and grandchildren. And I go one step further and say it may be more imminent than that, that we could destroy our currency. And we have to do something. And it, it's not going to come from the career politicians. Yeah, you know, I want to ask you about that because um, we, we've been talking about the Tea Party movement and sort of get it, trying to get more a handle on exactly, you know, who these people are, uh, what political affiliations, if any, uh, are these independent voters. And uh, when you look at some of the people who are sort of very actively involved, there are some questions here. I mean, Tom Tancredo, former uh, congressman out of Colorado, this is what he said at one of these events. He said, people who, c who could not even spell the word vote or say it, and then there were cheers, put a committed socialist ideologue in the White House's name, Barack Hussein Obama. Do you subscribe to that type of divisive wording and language? Well, I think what you see is that it's an amorphous movement. It's people from all walks of life. But really, there are some politicians who have gone into the movement and tried to become part of the movement. But really, the movement is about individual people. And like I met with the leaders of the Louisville Tea Party recently, and it's eight common citizens like the rest of us who work every day, who are middle class, who are not wealthy. But what resonates most with them is they look at the issues based on the issues, not on which party. Now, I think they tend to be more Republican than Democrat, but they will tell you if there's a good Democrat, they would support them. They base it on the issues. And I think they're not about the over-the-top uh, rhetoric. I do think that President Obama has gone way to the left and is leading the country towards bigger and bigger government. But I tell people it didn't start with him. I think it started really 60, 70 years ago with an expansive understanding of the Constitution where we say the Commerce Clause means anything and big government is driven through the Commerce Clause. All right, Amy, I, I, I totally hear your message about uh, fiscal conservatism and it has been what has uh, really galvanized many people, but then when you see some of the video that we just showed, they have Obama as Hitler, they have uh, you know a picture of him looking uh, dressed up in, in with blood coming out of his mouth, um, looking like the Joker. Yeah, and that's that not man. the kind of it's stuff. You know, I don't see much of that, actually. You know, what I see is, for example, one of the big things we talk about is reading the bills as a reform. And I do fault the president when he comes forward. And he actually sounds like he wants to capture some of the Tea Party because in his State of the Union, he says, oh, we all admit the bank bailout was wrong. Right. Well, if they admit it was wrong, explain why they voted for it, him and many Republicans. But explain why it was a thousand pages long printed at midnight and passed at noon the next day and they don't read the bills. The Tea Party movement about is about reading the bills. It's about constitutional government, but it's not all about name calling. I see very little of the name calling where I go. All right, and I want to ask you about the, the pure politics about some of this. You have uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell who's actively endorsing your primary opponent. You've won the backing though of former Republican leader Dick Armey who runs Freedom Works, flat tax advocate Steve Forbes. Um, you know, when you take a look at it, it's an anti-establishment campaign for you. Is it enough to win though? without the backing of the mainstream GOP? I think so. I think it's an enormous movement here. And I've been told the National Senate Committee won't get in. They're not positive that their endorsement actually is a help at this point. 
And uh, so we see it really as the grassroots. Most people in Kentucky don't want to be told by somebody in Washington who to vote for. And uh, so I think we have a great chance and a huge momentum. I mean, our me momentum really astounds me at this point. No, I mean, and it, it does. It has a lot of political watchers saying this is, a, you know, attributing a lot of it to uh, the Tea Party movement and the, uh, the, they look at what happened in Massachusetts. I mean, you think you can win this thing? Yeah, I think we're on our way. I think really as we go forward, it gets bigger and bigger with each day. Sarah Palin's endorsement has been huge for us. We've also been endorsed by gun owners groups. We've been endorsed by conservative groups. I mean, we've got a lot of key endorsements. Let me ask you about that, though, real quick. Uh, do you see eye to eye with Sarah Palin on, uh, on a lot of the social conservatism issues? And, uh, or is your message more fiscally conservative? I talk mostly about fiscal issues, but I am socially conservative. But on the stump, I primarily talk about the deficit, out of control government, pork barrel spending, term limits, a balanced budget amendment. But I am socially conservative, and I think what people like about Sarah Palin is basically she's very likable, I think. There are things about her that people say, well, that could be me in the sense that she has a family, she has to deal with issues in her family and things, but she comes out as a good mom and a person who wants what's best for the country. Well, she is polarizing, though. I mean, you're people that love her, love her, people that don't, don't. So it's very interesting. Uh, but anyway, it is a key endorsement. We'll uh, certainly uh, tell you that. Um, Rand Paul, good luck. Thanks for joining us once again. Lots changed since Thank we you. saw you six months ago. <laughs> yeah, we're we're real happy down here. All right, thanks so much.